Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Finding a fast, reliable, and affordable storage solution can be a little on the tricky side. I mean, SSDs are all those things, mostly, unless you want a really high capacity one. But even within SSDs, if you kind of go, yeah, I'm like, I'm ready to go, I'm like, gonna do this. Uh, there are so many different options to choose from that it can be a little bit overwhelming. So today, we'll be looking at the differences between a high-end SSD, two mid-range SSDs in RAID 0, a PC PCI Express SSD, and finally an enterprise grade, this one, professional PCI Express SSD. So on the test bench today, we've got our trusty Rigget frame with an MSI X-Power Z97 motherboard, 16 gigs of HyperX Fury RAM, and a 4790K processor. For the benchmarks, we're using Addo, ASSSD, Crystal Disk Mark, HD Tune, and the classic Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So the featured product today, I guess, if we had to call it something, is the SanDisk Lightning. LB206M, which is a 200 gig solid state accelerator. It is designed as a mission critical, 100% reliable, high throughput drive where users will be reading data 70% of the time and writing data only for the remaining 30%. So for most people, this will not necessarily be an ideal choice, not to mention that it's <clears throat> extremely expensive. It's also not advertised to be the fastest SSD even. Instead, it's an enterprise drive designed for servers or for data that you simply cannot afford to lose. And it would also work very well as a cache drive within a server. So it has a proprietary onboard controller and the LB206M is optimized for large data requests from multiple users and to minimize IO bottlenecks. It even has a capacitor backed cache so your data will not be lost if there's an interruption to your power, but okay, so that aside, what if you're not a business user? You're just a gamer with like a couple hundred bucks to spend. What are your comparable options in a similar 256 gigabyte capacity? First up is the tried and true Samsung 840 Pro. This has been one of the top performing SATA SSDs for actually quite some time now, and it's still at or near the top of the leaderboards when it comes to performance. With an advertised 540 megabytes per second read and 520 megabytes per second write, there is a reason that this older SSD is still a gold golden standard for comparison. But what if you don't want to pay the premium for the highest performing drive on the market? Could you make do with one or even two cheaper drives? Well, for more advanced users looking for more performance who aren't afraid to get their hands a little dirty, we have the ADATA SP920 series. They come in at almost half the price per gig of an 840 Pro, which means that we can run two of them in RAID 0, which basically means that every time we read or write to the drives, we are reading and writing to both of them in parallel, splitting the work between them. The other benefit here is that we get double the overall bandwidth because we're using two physical SATA interfaces as well. So you can learn more about RAID from this link here. So we should theoretically be able to get much more than we can achieve with a single drive, especially when it comes to sequential reads and writes. And finally, we have the newer technology. So it's that same PCI Express stuff we were talking about before, but with a more mainstream twist on it. This is the Plextor M6E PCI Express SSD, which gives you the performance of solid state flash memory without the limitations of SATA's six gigabit per second maximum. It uses an M.2 SSD on a pass-through board that simply connects it to a PCI Express 4X slot. By utilizing the PCI Express lanes and a proprietary Marvell controller, Plextor is advertising speeds of up to 770 megabytes per second for reads and 625 megabytes per second for writes. But what does all that mean in the real world? Because it's still using AHCI, so it's still kind of like a hybrid solution. Well, here are the results. All of these graphs and results, by the way, will be linked in the video description for those of you who want to take your time to read them. But basically, for random sequential file transfers, the results are about as expected. Each drive is capable of hitting their own theoretical maximum speeds, as there are very few limitations or challenges here. The ADATAs in RAID 0 were the fastest by far, hitting a lightning fast peak of 1.1 gigabytes per second reads and 700 megabytes per second writes. Random 4K is a completely different story. It's arguably the most important 
important result from a synthetic benchmarking standpoint, and random 4K IOPS are most representative of the average use case for an SSD boot drive. So here we can see that the leader is the 840 Pro with a peak of 108 megabytes per second reads and 32 megabytes per second writes. Surprisingly, the RAID 0 and PCI Express SSDs were not able to match this performance, so it goes to show you that there's no single best solution out there because you aren't going to want to take these and put them in a bunch of like enterprise grade servers. It's going to depend on how an individual SSD is tuned for the particular workload for which it is intended. So if you ever need advice, you can go ahead and uh, watch our videos, go read reviews, you know, ask on the NCIX forums or whatever else it comes down to. But if you're looking for something as sort of the average user, you want the very best of the best, this isn't a bad option. If you don't want to spend quite that much, this isn't a bad option either, but I think we're not quite up to the point where we're ready to recommend PCI Express SSDs unless you really want to save yourself those SATA slots or having drives mounted in cages or you're doing a kind of a specialty build or something like that. You really want to use your PCI Express slots for your storage because the cost to performance ratio is not quite there yet. So thank you guys very much for watching this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Comment below and tell us what you're going to use for your next storage solution. Are you interested in M.2? We did a video about that recently. You can check it out here. Are you going to run something like a RAID or are you just going to sort of stick with single drives and wait for SATA Express so you can free yourself from the SATA 3 6 gigabit per second limitations that are imposed upon us all? Thanks again for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe.